Marvin Minsky, MIT um, Media Lab. Everything is made of atoms. And so if you make a machine, uh, in some sense, it's made of the same kinds of materials that brains are made, but uh, organized maybe in s either very different ways or fundamentally the same ways. No one knows very much about how the brain represents knowledge and does reasoning at the moment, so it's hard to predict how long it will take to do things like that. At some point, when we understand how brains work, then we should be able to make functional copies out of other materials. And so uh, if you're going to copy the organization of a particular human mind, maybe you should make a dozen of them. And uh, there's no particular limit on how many copies to make and uh, how the future society will treat them. It's very hard to predict uh, what what will happen. There's a whole industry of called science fiction of people who uh, have written <coughs> ideas about uh, what the future of minds might be. Many of them were friends of mine, Isaac Asimov and Frederick Pohl and Arthur Clarke and I was born too late to know H.G. Wells and Jules Verne, but, but uh, <clears throat> when I was in my teens, I knew most of the uh, modern science fiction writers of the time. So I grew up talking to people like Asimov and Heinlein and Clark and uh, those generations of people who turned out many novels about their image of the future. It's, it's pretty hard to, to make predictions <clears throat> if we're talking about the 21st or 22nd century. There have been science fiction stories in which the computers of the world somehow become more cooperative and become a network and in some cases take over and uh, become super intelligent. I don't see any uh, reason to expect that to happen because it's hard to see how many very similar minds could become particularly more powerful than, than a small number. If you take a lot of people in a crowd there are a few situations that economists have discovered or, um, and psychologists where a large number of people in a democratic organization make better decisions than a typical individual. But my impression is that psychologists are very proud to demonstrate such things and they're really quite rare. And a hundred very good mathematicians doesn't usually produce an Einstein or Einstein-like community that gets new ideas that none of the individuals could get. Well, there'll be a lot more discussion of uh, subjects like this in the conference next June called Global Future 2045. And there's a web page at gf2045.com, which should have news about that meeting and uh, presumably some discussion before and after the actual meeting in New York City. And uh, many people like me will be uh, arguing and discussing ideas like these about the future of human minds. Many science fiction writers have talked about uh, the future of human minds and what will happen if we uh, eliminate death and people can live forever and keep growing and so forth. Uh, I doubt that very much of that will happen by 2045, but, but who knows? And uh, this conference will uh, be discussing questions like that. The total population of humans on Earth is 
in some question. We can't keep growing uh, the way we are, but if we can make ourselves more efficient and smaller, then there's no reason why we can't have a trillion very small people rather than uh, 20 billion large ones eating up all of the world's resources. So there are lots of possibilities in the future that, that no one seriously discusses. When will all these great things happen of overcoming death and making people more intelligent and turning ourselves into machines with replaceable parts so that suffering and that sort of thing will disappear? It's very hard to predict, but my impression is that uh, progress has been slowing down rather rapidly in the last uh, few decades, and that in the early days of cybernetics from 1940 to 1980, we were learning more and more about the brain very rapidly. And contrary to many current opinions, I think we're learning less and less in recent years because people are trying to understand the brain itself rather than make good theories of how brains might work. It doesn't help to look at a brain unless your head is already full of powerful ideas about what might be going on there. The only people who have thought about the future, in my opinion, uh, of humanity are the science fiction writers. And I recommend the writings of the great science fiction pioneers, John Campbell and Frederick Pohl and Arthur Clarke and Isaac Asimov and Larry Niven and so many others.